Welcome to Knife Chats with Tobias, brought to you by the Cat Production Team. Um, this video is going to be a little bit of a departure from what I normally do for my uh, Wednesday videos. Uh, and it's mainly because I'm very much pressed for time. I usually shoot my videos uh, a couple weeks ahead of time. Actually, I try to keep a, a buffer in place. But, um, well, let me put it this way. I've actually been out having fun. Uh, on vacation and stuff so I don't have any backlog left so I need to get some kind of uh, content up for Wednesday and it's Tuesday night and uh, I am fresh out of ideas I've got two big videos that I'm working on but I will not have those ready for tomorrow so I really just got to do something and uh, I came up with this idea of uh, five knives that are basically stainless steel throughout and um, well I thought I would try and grab five of uh, my favorite um, stainless steel knives and well that's what I'm doing uh, hopefully this will work out okay and uh, I can get it up in time for Wednesday at 11 o'clock <laughs> that is going to be a tall order for me and so, without further ado, <laughs> number one on the list would have to be my uh, United States Air Force uh, military knife, or milk knife. And it's simply because, uh, well, it was hard to find and I was really looking for this one. I've already done a video on this. Matter of fact, I think every, video, every knife you're going to see in this video has been in a video in the past. Um, anyone who's familiar with these knows exactly what it is. It's... Um, you know, the four blade cap knife. So you've got the uh, safety can opener over here. And then um, you have the long screwdriver cap lifter on this side. The spear master blade. And you see right there, Camillus 1993. So you know when this knife came out. And, uh, and then finally the punch blade. And this knife has seen very little use uh, and uh, it only came out from what I understand in 1993 and this is something that was sold on the uh, base exchange on uh, Air Force bases for the United States Air Force so it was not an issue item it was something that the airmen could buy at the uh, air base on at the BX and I'm guessing that they also showed up in uh, civilian stores off base too now next up is a rigging knife or sailing knife or a marlin spike knife, whatever you want to call it. And this is one that um, took me a while to get and I was hunting for one of these for the longest time. And that is the Sea line 100% stainless steel. And you see Sea line there with the uh, rope. And uh, these are not easy to find. I think they're made by Marine West or West Marina, something like that. Uh, I have done a video on it. Oh, here we go. West Products USA. I think that's now West Marina. And so you can see what it is. You got your uh, typical sheep foot blade there, non-locking. Look at how nice and thin that is. And then on the other side, you have a nice little marlin spike. And does it lock? No, Marlin Spike does not lock either, but it is nice and stiff. And well, if you're using it right, you're probably grabbing it down here and everything else. So, like I said, it took me forever to find one of these things. Uh, they are kind of scarce, especially with that nice C line going on there. And what's nice is you got the C line on both sides. And yeah, it's really, I've got better Marlin Spike knives for sure. And uh, I've got ones that are worth more money, but uh, this still is just one of my favorites in the collection simply because of the sea line on the side there. Really looks nice. Um, and like I said, I've already done a video on that. Let's see if I can get that sea line to show up. Okay. And what do we have next? All right. Uh, I'll break it out. 
and mainly because I use this so often. It is the Ozark Trail Hobo Knife or Camp Tool, whatever you want to call it. And it is, uh, a lot of people can't stand these things, but because, I mean, it's a Walmart special. But I tell you what, this thing I have used quite often. Yes, it is cheap 420 steel. Some people claim it rusts. I've used it quite often. I've seen no rust yet. Um, and as you can tell, it's a nice take apart knife there. So you have the uh, knife blade over here and the fork over here so you can take and cut your steak if you can keep this 420 steel uh, sharp, you know, poke. You also have with the uh, fork your combination can opener and cap lifter and it does work this cap lifter does work we won't talk about the knives that have cap lifters that don't work and you also even have a corkscrew on there um, and then finally over here what else do you have you have a punch blade or a reamer whatever you want to call it and um to get this to open and close, you have to have the fork and spoon open. And you close it down, squeeze it, and I mean you really do need to squeeze it. If you don't squeeze it tight, it will not close properly. But once you've got it in there, it's nice and tight and it's closed. Oops, let's see, I missed it. There we go. In any case, you see, it's holding tight. I've had this thing for a good 10, 15 years. I think I paid $2.97 for it when I got it. I think they're still under $5. You got a little key ring there, which is great because then you can hook it onto some string, drop it in the boiling water to clean it all up and everything. It's just a really good hobo knife and dirt cheap. So my Ozark Trail hobo knife. And so next up is actually a multi-tool, and that is my Zooline Monkey Wrench. Um, if you see there, copyright Zooline. These are actually made back in the 1950s or 60s, and they were actually sold in zoos in America. And you got a little monkey wrench, and if you notice, there's his face. The jaws are the jaws of the wrench are his mouth. Got an eye. There's his rivets. There's his ear. There's his arm coming down. There's his leg on the backside there. His arm is more defined over here than it is over here. One of the lines is kind of missing. Uh, and the mouth opens up to about three-eighths of an inch. So you can use it for very small bolts, nothing big. But uh, still kind of cool. Among the tools that come with it are a um, Phillips screwdriver down here which will not open up if the uh, if the mouth is all the way open. So you got to close the mouth in order to get the Phillips screwdriver open. And it is, I guess, what you would call spine mounted. It is definitely hard to get out, but will work. So you got your Phillips driver on this side, and on the other side over here, you obviously have a knife blade. These were made in Japan. Nice little spear blade. It's chrome coated over um, over uh, carbon steel, and that's why you can see the little blemish there. That's where the chrome plating is worn off. And then um, next up, you have your bottle opener, a nail file, and a screwdriver tip there. So that's a pretty cool thing. And um, if you notice, like everything else here, this also has a bail. Well, this has a key ring. But everything can be hung so far. And, uh, well, let's take a look at the last uh, knife in the uh, selection for today. Um, and that is one that I have already done a video on also, but I think it deserves a second look. And it's pretty dang cool. It's also from the 1930s. And it's made by K-Bar. And it's something no one would have ever thought K-Bar would have been making in 1930. And so here we have it. 
It is uh, five and a half inches long closed. You see the little bail here and the little lever there. And anyone who's familiar probably already knows what this is. And that is a belly song or butterfly knife. Um, I'm sure a lot of people are thinking Kmart made belly songs. Yes, they did. And you can see it right down in here. Well, sort of buried underneath all that it actually says um, where it was made and that it was made by K-Bar in the USA only in New York but you can't see it because well <laughs> the blade has these two little rivets going through there to make it uh, open and close and uh, as you can also tell it's got a fish scaler along the top so not only is it a belly song or butterfly knife, but it is a fishing knife. So who would have thought that K-Bar would be making, and these actually do come from the 1930s, like I said. So kind of cool, huh? Uh, a K-Bar belly song from the 1930s. Uh, and that uh, pretty much wraps up this video. I know it's a very short video, I will try to uh, put the links to all of these knives that I have done videos on in the description below so that you can go and check them out if you want to. Uh, sorry again for the short video. Also, I apologize that there will not be a real um, slideshow after this. Uh, I am just way behind on making content, but I did want to offer you something this Wednesday. On the bright side, there is a new video coming out this Sunday and also another Fixed Blade Friday night will resume this Friday uh, with the Kukri. So there you have it. Um, again, my apologies for the short video, but I hope you liked looking at a little bit of stainless steel. Thanks for dropping by Knife Chats with Tobias. Don't forget to give us that thumbs up, leave a comment below, and subscribe and ring that notification bell so you know when the next episode is up and online.